um, who may not be able to hear. So congratulations, you're on Zoom. <laughs> I don't, some of you might have been like, this is your first time Zooming. Uh, and others of you might have been doing this daily since COVID began. So um, I just get a sense, uh, do you feel like you're somewhat comfortable? I don't want to treat you like you're idiots or babies. Oh, go and ahead. Okay. So shout if you're, you go, we know this, or if you go, Lynn, you're talking too technical. Please like ask the stupid question because I'm talking above you. So uh, no stupid questions. Um, so we're going to start with um, what you see on your screen right now. Um, so along the bottom of your screen, you should see a couple buttons. Um, and I will share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about and hopefully Yours looks something like this. So screen share. Hopefully you have something. Can you see my desktop here? This frightening yes. picture of me? Yep. Yes. <laughs> Do you guys see along the bottom of your screen, there's this black bar that yeah. says mute, stop, and has a couple extra features and then end. We're going to start with that um, mute button. If you push that mute button, you're going to stop talking. You can't be heard. So say you get a phone call and you don't want to distract us. It's good etiquette to mute during that phone call ring or when that cuckoo clock's going or when you need to have a conversation with your spouse or someone like, hey, I'm leaving the house or something. So um, good etiquette is um, for Zoom is um, learning how to mute and unmute yourself. Um, so that is going to be your friend um, for muting. And so you can practice doing that over the course of today if you like. Um, each Zoom meeting as a host today, your host, uh, and I guess for the continuation of uh, the Tuesday Fellowship Group, uh, Ted Strand will be one of your hosts. So he has power to mute you if uh, you, you um, forget to mute yourself and you start talking to someone um, on your end and it's distracting for all of us. Um, but some of you are will need to give him access to unmute you. So say you want to say something, you might get a pop up on your screen that says unmute. Do you, are you sure you want to let Ted Strand unmute you? And you have to hit that confirmation. Lynn, so, is that a big pop up? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, but so having the knowledge about muting and unmuting yourself so that you don't have to have a host ask you for that is really helpful. Any questions about muting or unmuting or when it's good to do that or? Oh, okay, good. I'm taking I see none. Shout if maybe you're all muted and you can't figure out how to unmute yourself. Maybe. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> everybody, there's a Lynn's going to give us a quiz at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The uh, next button next to the mute button is stop video. So if you click on that, <clears throat> your image will disappear. So, um, Advantages for this is if you go, I'm sitting at my computer right now, but I need to go start cooking dinner. So I'm going to take my laptop to the kitchen. Some of you don't have this because you have desktops, but say you do. And so instead of carrying your laptop and making everybody seasick because you're walking around and everything's moving behind you, if you stop video and walk it there and then turn it back on, um, 
that is a um, good use of turning on and off video. So, um, so there's things like that. Um, so that, you know, if for some reason there's something going on in your house, you're, you know, no, no, no. Grandchild comes, your grandchild comes running through the house naked or something and you don't want them to be seen, you can, you can stop, uh, stop the video. Who's, uh, who's video is that? Somebody has surround sound. You never know what's happening. Anyway. anyway. So, 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 somebody trying to talk? Yes? No? Hi, okay. it's Sue. I can talk. Uh, I think Gary Boyd uh, went to mute. So it, that would, what, I think that's where the sound came from. Hi. <laughs> Um, okay, so you can practice uh, to stopping and starting your video if you'd like. Um, so um, questions about video and connecting to your video. Um, if you have a desktop that does not have a camera, you won't be seen. You can see everybody on Zoom, but you won't be seen. So. Um, I know some people have had that as an issue, um, but uh, we'd like to see you enable. Um, so now we're going to get into something a little bit fancy. Uh, Phil was showing off his virtual backgrounds earlier today. Um, so say you want to get rid of the weird, you know, background in your house. You don't want us to see your messy house because you haven't cleaned because you just don't want to, I guess. I don't know. Um, you can add a virtual background. So it looks like you're in Paris or in the woods or your favorite, you know, vacation spot that you weren't able to go to this year. So if you, there's a little carrot next to the stop video button. And if you click that, um, you should see a choose virtual background button. And you will get a pop up. And it will, it might have some default um, backgrounds for you to choose. Um, or you can upload uh, a photo with the little plus icon. Does everybody see what I'm talking about? Yes? No? Yes, I see. <laughs> Questions? So if you click that, but, you can- Lynn, see, see what happens if you don't have newer technology, you will get a background that looks unuseful, like mine right now. That's yeah. what happens when you have older equipment. Mm -hmm. When you have good equipment like Phil's got, you get that nice background. And, and women have a harder time with virtual backgrounds because their hair moves more. So it loses your hair more than someone with short hair. Mm -hmm. um, so you That's can kind my of- problem. Sometimes. <laughs> so um, that's a fun tip to be able to do. I don't know, I see some of you are on your phones or iPads. I'm not sure if you can do it on a phone or an iPad. I'd have to play on the phone app a little more. Do you can do, do it on an iPad, I think. Okay. That's what Hi, I'm Sue on an iPad, and there is a little dot, dot, dot more, and I found it there. Perfect. Yeah, because I've used it on the iPad. People that are on there. Okay, my screen no, said. Don't have pictures. Um, Carol, was that you speaking? Yeah, my my what when I come to choose virtual background, it says none. None. Uh, you'd have to upload a um, a picture. A picture. Okay. Which you do. Um, there's a little plus icon 
Yeah. Let me find it. Um, so this will make you look a little seasick because I just took this all the up. people that are. I just or it says I had image. Yeah. Do you see? There, it says virtual background. There's none right now. Right. Mm -hmm. You can hit this little plus icon and it will say select a photo and you can m navigate through your computer and pick a family photo or flowers or you can download a photo from the internet. Yeah. Um, I know I've downloaded a lot of uh, Pixar backgrounds um, because um, I've done some virtual babysitting for friends. In so, order um, to trying to entertain um, find out that's how I find out Lynn could I I don't know if this is the place but I was on zoom I've been on zoom yeah, for the whole time the picture comes up and my um, image was so so dark and I thought something is wrong so I finally asked my computer how to lighten your thing and I found the camera app and you had to go in and I was able to make my picture brighter because mm -hmm. I was coming out almost it was like I was sitting in the dark no matter how many lights I put on mm -hmm. and I was so pleased with myself that I could lighten the picture. <laughs> I'm very impressed. Well, yes. I, me well too. it took me months to do it. <laughs> so tell yeah. us how to do it Carol. Well, on my computer, I have a, the selection was camera. And then when you click on camera, if you go in the upper left, there's a button you turn on to make it. I think it's called pro mode or something. I had to turn something on. And then when I went down on the side, there was a brightness bar. And I was able to just, it, like it was a dot, a line that went up and down and it would get brighter or darker as I was doing it. And then I think there was something about the resolution of the picture, which I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. So I left that as it was. Mm -hmm. Thanks. But, but it shows you yourself while you're doing it and it was easy to tell how bright you needed it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Let's talk a little bit about camera and what you should and shouldn't show on your camera while zooming. Uh, light is a big factor, as Carol has said. You don't want to look like the creepy, you know, villain from a horror film, all dark. Um, so having lights on or adjusting your camera uh, vocal like um, Carol did um do that but uh you also don't want light streaming in your background washing you out as well so um sometimes just turning on a light fixes your issue um you also um ideally uh simple backgrounds so that it's not so cluttered and busy that people lose sight of you because of that um a lot of people i know are on desktop so you can't really move your background around so that's why virtual backgrounds come into play. Um, but you do, uh, some people um, have gone out and bought their, their lights developed for your computers now to enhance you so that you look good in case your computer doesn't have a feature like Carol's where you can up the brightness feature. Um, so if you want to look on Amazon or anything like that, you can buy some more lights designed for Zoom. Um, they're make a big marketing um, thing since COVID has started. Um, but we also want to talk about framing uh, in your camera. So if you're a single person um, watching on Zoom, you don't want to be this person up here where you just see the mouth or if you're on your iPhone or Android and it's you're looking you have it on your computer and you're looking down and you see up your nostrils because that's where the camera is. So um, being intentional about looking at your own camera. Not a lot of people like looking at themselves. So they tend to look at all the other people, but just 
make sure you check and look somewhat decent. Um, you don't have your face up super close or Mariana who was showing off the ceiling like this earlier, she was able to adjust it. Um, you, you kind of want to show anything from here above. You want a little bit of head space above you. Head space is um, gap above your head. So your, your head's not cut off like that. Um, and then center ideally, but um, if you've got multiple people and things on your screen, that's another issue as well. Um, you also, they have talked a lot about, uh, which I struggle to do and I should do it more often and I apologize, is look directly at your camera on your um, thing. So you're making eye contact, which means that you're not looking at the people on your screen, which I find, because I want to look at you guys. You guys are beautiful people and I just want to see your smiling faces. Um, but if you're doing a presentation, they ask you to look at the camera, which is typically if it's on your computer, you usually see a green or blue or red light and that shows you where the camera is. Um, but, and that's where you look. So right now I'm looking there and I probably look better at you because I'm actually looking at the camera and having a conversation, but now I don't get to see you. So um, that is a thing to take, you know, into consideration when doing Zoom. Um, questions about uh, camera angles and things? No? Go ahead. Do they have, do they have, do they have makeup for Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> They do have touch-ups. Under that virtual background, there was um, choose video filter, and you can do a couple of different things. You can add, you know, um, um, what's it called? Well, you can do silly things uh, if you're playing with kids, like this kind of stuff, yeah. but we don't want that. But you can touch up your appearance. Um, as well in that section I'm trying to find under the video feature, uh, touch up my appearance and you can change it. So it touches up your face. Um, and under that fitting video setting is actually um, adjust for low light and different things. So you can, uh, if you go under that section with the virtual background, you can um, do a lot of, um, stuff um, to enhance your video quality in the settings there. Oh. Lynn, question. Yes. Um, unfortunately, I suddenly got a 10% close image with like blackness. <laughs> I then walked to, I could not um, uh, get to the camera setting to turn it off, mm -hmm. but my screen was black. And I walked to, of course, where I could recharge, and now I see everyone again. I'm hoping that well, while my screen was black, I wasn't making everyone seasick while I was walking. <laughs> like, did I go black? Do you did no, you, we, did no, you notice? We saw, we saw your background and stuff. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Um, something else I want to talk about, if you guys are okay with the. Uh, camera stuff. Yeah. You're learning uh, camera etiquette, things that I teach our camera folks for the live stream team. So um, you're getting sneak peek behind the scenes. Um, at the top right corner of your screen, you should have either a button that says speaker view or gallery view. Um, so if you are on gallery view, you should get a Brady Bunch uh, type screen with all of our little heads um, filling up the whole screen. And that way you can look at everybody. And it's good to see. Uh, does everybody see that button, either speaker view or gallery view? Yes, I have it upper you, right hand corner. Yes. If you click on that, some people, you know, just want to see the speaker. Like if I'm doing a presentation, more important than just me. You, you'd want a speaker view because you, that's really who you care about, right? Right. But um, 
if you want to have a fellowship or happy hour or anything like that, you really want gallery view because that's what you can see. And, you know, I like seeing all your faces. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Everybody see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Um, Dave, do you have a question? You have your hand up. You're muted. David Goodell. Good. Lynn, does Android phones have that feature? If you're on your phone, if you touch the screen, it should pop up on the side, on the top right. Keyword should. Who was talking? I'm trying to see. Um, Barb Boyd speaking. Oh, Barb, your video disappeared. Did you shut off your camera? The stop video button? No, our Android phone doesn't have that. Huh. I, I'll have to look at the app. I don't have an Android, so I'll have to. My brother's my Android person that I go to. <laughs> wow. that. Does anybody have an Android that they've played with before that they have this magical answer? Uh, no? Uh, may I ask a question? Uh, Please. Yes. Why, um, if I were on a Zoom with, uh, or even with all of you, and I wanted to have us all look at a podcast or a lecture, could I put that on with the uh, speaker view? Uh, um, could I put the speaker on my um, on my uh, screen and then click gal uh, click speaker view and we would all hear that lecture going. I'll do you one better, Bob. Um, there's a green button at the bottom of your screen that should say share screen. Yes, I see that. And if you click that, you should be able to share something. So say you want to do a uh, DVD study or a PowerPoint, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. you would click that green button and um, it's going to have a lot of different options for you. So uh -huh. the first one is either on Macs, it's called desktop one on PCs, it's screen and it's highlighted blue. And if you click that, and hit the share button on the right hand side, um, you should now see my computer desktop. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. There. So, um, so it would look like that, Dave, if that makes sense to you. Lynn, um, Lynn, yes. but if anybody clicks on the share, don't they first have to, it'll pop up saying you need permission? Yes. The host would have to then grant permission before they can share it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for our account, our Westminster account, that is true. Um, but if you have a free account or if you have not set up that feature on your Zoom account, which a lot of people haven't done, um, anybody can do it. So uh, we at Westminster are over cautious. We don't want anybody taking over control, you know sharing stuff that they shouldn't be sharing, like their bank accounts or anything like that. Um, so we have it very strict. Um, but if you're just doing a Zoom with your friends or family, most likely anybody could screen share. Um, so Bob, if you're doing a presentation for this group or for a journey, um, yeah. you, the host would have to give you access to screen share. Um, but if you're doing it for a group at Wellington and you have to create the Zoom meeting, um, huh. you could do it yourself without being asked. Uh huh. If that makes sense. Yes, thank you. Yep. A, a con Lynn, a comment to, to the group, I think. If you want to send a chat message to someone and you click on the chat and you send them the message, you have to, it doesn't come up in the center of the screen with a big box that says somebody's trying to send you a chat. 
it's kind of a uh, unintrusive box in the bottom center, at least on my screen. And if you're not expecting a chat to come in, you don't see it. You should all now have a chat notification pop up. Did you see a little red thing? Uh-huh. That chat, if you click that chat button, you should see the chat I just sent you. Yeah. So if you want to have a conversation where you go, uh, Lynn's asking a question and she can't hear me or she doesn't see my hand raised, you could click the chat and type it in there so I can see your question. Um, or if you don't want to speak up and you like being quiet and you, you know, would prefer not to speak up in the group, you could type it there and it would be seen um, for that. Um, so you could do that if you like. And you can see it says it's from Lynn to everyone. Um, what you can do is you can also at the bottom where it says everyone, you can click on it and pick a name. So um, if you want to have a side conversation with, say, um, Dan Williams and talk about golf or something, you know, you could have that side conversation without bothering the rest of us. Or, you know, if you go, oh, can we just call, can I call you later today to talk about something? You can have that side conversation in the chat uh, without interrupting everybody. Does that make sense? questions about chat, just be, be cautious um, with who you are sending the message to. If you're making fun of what I'm wearing or my presentation, <laughs> uh, please don't put that under everyone. You could accidentally do some uh, things if you're uh, not careful. Um, <laughs> um, questions? Uh, yes. Um. I was just wondering how you set up a Zoom. If I wanted to Zoom with my family, mm -hmm. uh, how do you begin all of that process? Yes, um, we'll start. We pull up the, where is it? Let's pull this up. Okay, so if you look at the bottom of your Bar, you probably have downloaded the Zoom app either on your phones, iPad, or computer. And it's that blue water bottle icon at the bottom of your screen. It's, it's blue, but it's supposed to be a camera, but it's not. Uh, and when you open that um, uh, application up before you join if you don't click the link like you probably to get on this meeting click the link that dave sent out to everyone um but if you open the actual zoom app on your desktop or your ipad you would see something that looks like this okay um and if you want to you know look on your computer and see if you see it and you don't if you have questions shout but if you open it up, this is the Mac version. The PC version looks somewhat similar, um, but there are four options um, that you can do. If you're in this home section, you want to make sure. Can you see my mouse? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. You in this home section, this is where you should see these four buttons and this clock with any meetings that are upcoming that you might have today. Um, so if you click on, say, um, join, mm -hmm. if you click this join, sorry, I, let me pull, you will, it will do this pop-up button. And here you can type that, instead of clicking that link that was sent out, you could type in the meeting ID number um, that was given. It's usually like a nine digit number. Um, and then you can hit join. And this is where you can change your name so I know Bob was having, was Rhoda today and we had to change him. Uh, if he joined this way, um, he could type in Bob instead of Rhoda and enter that way without having to do it once you were in the meeting. Um, and if say the meeting has a password, 
it would ask you then to put the password in. Uh, so that's what happens if you hit the join button um, instead of clicking that link, that hyperlink that was sent out that you probably use today. Um, but to schedule a meeting, you would hit this blue schedule button. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you click that schedule button, this would pop up and you can choose a topic. So if you want to do family get together or friends happy hour or whatever Zoom meeting, piano lesson or, you know, whatever, you would type that up here in the topic uh, and then you would pick the date. This is happening, you know, Friday at 430 and you would, you know, pick that and you can uh, do an end time. The times really don't, doesn't matter. You could log in two days ahead of time or two days after and it would still work. Um, but it's just to give you an estimate or if you run over, um, it's okay. If you have a free Zoom account, uh, your meetings will only be 40 minutes long. Um, so the church has a, a paid account uh, so our meetings go over 40 minutes. So if you're interested in meetings um, that are going over 40 minutes long, um, you'd have to upgrade your account to be paid. Um, but you could also schedule two back-to-back -back meetings and send that out to the same group of people and say, okay, now let's join this um, as well. Um, so say you wanna do a reoccurring meeting every Monday or something, you would hit this reoccurring meeting um, to do that. Um, so um, am I going too quickly? Are you guys following? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, just shout at me if there's questions. Um, I have a question, Lynn. Yeah. Um, when I was on my um, book club uh, last week, mm -hmm. uh, we were told we would only have 45 minutes. Yeah. And then about, 20 minutes into our meeting, we got something across the screen that Zoom was allowing us to continue past the time allotted huh. and unlimited time. So, but I don't know how, how that works. But if you go beyond the 40 minutes, there's normally a fee. Yes, yes. I know that, um... Co when COVID first hit, Zoom eliminated the 40 minute feature because it was COVID and they wanted to, you know, be a good company and help people in need. Um, so maybe that's still happening, but I do a weekly Zoom meeting with my grandmother every week and their, her retirement facility sets it up and it cuts us out after 40 minutes. We'll be in the middle of a conversation and it just ends abruptly at 40 minutes and there's a countdown. Um, 10 minutes out, there's a countdown that, you know, says you've only got 10 minutes, you've only got five minutes, and then mm -hmm. it just shuts you off. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, that's uh, great to hear that you didn't have that as an issue. Um, so maybe, time anyway. <laughs> maybe you were just lucky, maybe, yeah. uh, or they were doing a beta test, I don't know. Um, anybody else have, um, had experience I have, with I that? have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> I did. I'm unmuted. I don't know. Yeah. I'm doing here. I went back here. Yeah. Lynn? Yeah. I'm I think you said I was busy writing something when you said it that you were a Mac, but a PC works differently with how this screen looks to initiate a meeting. Am I right so far? It should look pretty much the same. Okay, well. It should look a little different, but it should look pretty much the same. All the same commands and boxes and places to click on. Yes. Okay, because I was going to ask if there was anyone in the group who's real a computer Zoom savvy could show me what it looks if you're on a PC and you want to initiate because that's my situation. But if it looks similar, I'm not worried. I guess I'll, I'll figure it out. Because that's if the you crux. you still one. have the white box with the four buttons. It looks very similar. The box that Lynn was 
showing is the same on a PC. Okay, thanks, Ted. I'll practice That's later. Oh. Yes. Um, so, so back to scheduling. Any other questions before we go back to scheduling a meeting? Okay. Um, oh, uh, sorry, it's Sue again. And yeah. I was late with clicking on mute. Um, I believe, you know, on my desktop, I have the little icon that looks like a water bottle and I can select that and I get the screen uh, probably that you demonstrated before I um, expect to have an account to set up meetings. Do I need to take any separate action to create a quote free account? Um, that is a different avenue. We'll um, I'll circle back to that question, okay? It, you probably already have an account set up, but um, let's finish the schedule meeting and then we'll talk about Zoom accounts, okay? Circling back's great. Thanks so much. Okay. Um, so when scheduling uh, a Zoom meeting, uh, it, you have a selection to generate automatic a meeting ID or you can choose a, mer a personal meeting ID. So this personal meeting ID is Lynn George's personal meeting ID. That number will work under my account every single time. So if somebody puts that meeting ID in, it automatically connects them to my account. Um, so it's kind of like my Zoom phone number. Um, if they log in and type that number in, you can do that. So if you have, you know, um, family members that you just want to log in and talk to them, you could type that meeting number in and immediately get to them. Um, but if you're doing, uh, but it's not very secure if you choose the personal meeting ID every single time. Um, because uh, if it gets out, you know, people could hack into your account and things like that. So I always generate a new meeting ID number. Um, but that's up to you if you want to give your close family and friends that number. Um, but anytime you create a meeting, I would say you do that. Um, and then if you have a free account, you uh, are forced to have a passcode or password. Um, so you, it would have this. Since I'm a paid account, I have the selection of choosing a waiting room instead where I let you in. You can also have a waiting room where you can let people in. Uh, for your purposes, you probably don't need it so much as uh, for church type accounts um, where it's a event and you want to bring people in. If you've attended my tech times, there's a waiting room and then I allow everybody in when I'm ready for them. Um, does that sound good? Oops. Um, and then audio, uh, you always want to choose people can do both phone and computer audio because if say um, my computer audio stops working, I could then call in with my phone number and talk. Um, I know some of you have done that with desktops when you can't, you don't have a camera on your desktop. So you'll call in through the phone number and do it that way. Um, and then you just hit save and it will do a, it will give you all the meeting information. You can copy that into an email and send to your friends and family. Um, so that's how you schedule a meeting. Um, say, you know, I schedule a meeting on Monday and I want to start my meeting um, that I've scheduled. So in, I'll open Zoom the day of, and instead of having to type in that information or clicking that link that I found people, if you open the account and you've created the meeting, you should have a list of all your Zoom, Zoom meetings. And you can hit the start button and it will automatically take you in. This would be yesterday's trustee meeting um, <laughs> that, if I wanted to join that. Or if you go, I want to copy this and send it to a friend, you can just click this copy information, it will copy everything, and then you can just open an email and then right click and paste, and it will put that in an email for you. 
Does that make sense to everyone? Or am I speaking above your heads again? Okay. You guys are so quiet. Maybe you're all muted and can't figure out how to unmute yourself. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, so this is a easier way of um, getting, you know, things and not having to hunt through stuff in your emails. Um, yes? Cool. This probably, uh, unless you sync your, your uh, Google account, your iCalendar account, which is your, if you have an iPhone or a Mac, the iCalendar is your um, automatic calendar for your phone, your iPhone or Mac, or if your Google Calendar, which is an Android um, thing, if you sync those accounts, it should bring in any other Zoom meetings you might have and on any other events. Like I recorded handbells last night on video. That's with my, um, because I synced my calendar, it's listed there even though um, it's not a Zoom meeting. So, um, but if you sync your accounts, which is a whole nother conversation, um, it should bring in meetings that your friends and family schedule for you as well. Um, and you'll also have the option to get reminders like, hey, this meeting starts in five minutes or half an hour or things like that. Um, so, um, questions about scheduling meetings or finding Zoom meetings or copying Zoom information to send to friends and family when doing a meeting. Before we move on to uh, Sue's uh, question about Zoom accounts. Okay, <laughs> hearing none, throw stuff in the chat if you uh, mm. have issues. Um, and maybe somebody can shout at me because I'm not paying attention um, to that. Uh, as for Sue's question, do you see over here on the uh, right hand side, there's my initials um, LG with a little green dot uh, that green dot tells people that I am online, I am active on Zoom, so they could call me and I'd be around. But that LG tells you that I'm logged into my Zoom account. Um, and if you click on that LG, this pop-up will uh, show. So you can um, go in here. Um, you can add a custom message if you want. So most of you know, I, my tagline is have a sweet day from my days of working at Hershey's Chocolate World. Um, so I threw that in there. Um, and in your um, settings, um, or there might be a feature, move me to a licensed user. You can see up here, I'm a licensed user, which means that I have a paid account. Um, so it, it will ask if you wanna upgrade um your stuff um you can also say do not disturb me i am busy i don't want people zooming me right now um you can also change your picture i know some of you when you stopped your video had a picture uh instead of your name so you could replace your picture um there um it does have to be a small size so that's one of the reasons i don't have a profile picture because i'm too lazy to make mine so much smaller than everything else. Um, um, does, so Sue, when you want to go in, this is where you would see uh, if you have a account and things like that, or if you want to upgrade your account. You can also, when creating a Zoom account, it, you can choose to create a new uh, username and password. Um, so, which is the one I would recommend to do because it's the most secure one. You can also link it to your uh, Facebook and uh, Gmail. So if you have a Gmail account or a Google account, you can sync it to Google. So you only have to remember that one password, which is your Google account. Um, or if you have a Facebook account and want them to do it that way. I'm one of the 
paranoid people that don't want to give more power to Google and Facebook than they already have on me. Um, so I tend to always create an account from scratch. Um, so that's my personal decision, but you can do whatever you like um, on that regard. Um, questions about creating a Zoom account, upgrading your Zoom account or anything like that. Does that answer your question, Sue? Um, yes, but I will be listening to your um, recording over and over again. So it really sinks in and I thank you so very much. You're welcome. Um, hey, Lynn, I have a question on a different issue. Yeah. Um, on Wednesday nights, we have um, a gathering of men, Bible study. Yes. And Ed always sends us a hyperlink to get into Zoom. Yes. For whatever reason, his hyperlink on my computer does never, never gets me in. I have to put in separately the ID and the password hmm. each, each and every time. And yet I have no trouble getting into the church's services or like the thing today I clicked on the hyperlink, I get in. Hmm. But for some reason on the Gathering of Men hyperlink, it won't go in and I have to manually put in the uh, codes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Any idea why that's the case? I'm not sure off the top of my head. I know uh, Mariana had this issue on Sunday with the journey class. I know Zoom has gone down a couple times because it's so popular right now. Right. I, I would think Wednesday night and Sunday mornings, that would not be the case, which is both right. of your issues happened. Lynn, it could be a browser issue. Um, yes, Ted, sorry. Lynn, we could have a difference because the Wednesday night gathering of men is being run off of uh, Scott Lockridge's uh, business account, not the church account. But how come the other guys are able to do it and I can't? Well, I always have to enter the passcode. Oh, and, you do? And the number. Yeah, I always do. Because Jerry says he just goes on the hyperlink and he gets in. So. Uh, we'll have to talk. Well, let's have that discussion Wednesday night. Okay. I know I set up Westminster's account uh, to do a one-click join feature so that when you click it, it automatically enters the password for you. So you don't have to deal with that. Maybe Scott uh, probably doesn't have access to all those administrative controls that uh, Pastor John and I do, and so we set that feature up. But if Jerry's able to do that, then that one class feature is around. Maybe try a different browser um, to yeah. log in. All right, I'll try that next time. But, but Ted, we can take it up Wednesday night. Yeah. Because a couple of guys have the problem, some guys don't. Um, I'd be curious to see if everybody's default bra browser is the same one or not. Um, All right, I'll ask. Let me know. Keep me updated. Okay. So I can help others. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure others have the same problems sometimes. Yeah. Um, but that, but yeah, those are other tips so you know how to do it another way, um, okay. if needed. Um, I mean, manually it works. It's just a pain in the neck because you got to get, you know, all the letters and numbers right. Password's usually pretty short. It's only like six numbers. Mm -hmm. But the ID can be pretty long. And us old guys, you know, our fingers don't work that well. So. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Is it the same meeting ID every time? Is it a reoccurring meeting they did for you? Yeah, it's a reoccurring meeting. That's so I have, the, so I have the problem every time, yeah. Other um, Zoom questions? Oh, you can see Chuck uh, Chuck has a profile picture that I was talking about. Um, I said Chuck. Other um, questions? Rick didn't take my advice with uh, the camera angle. Um, don't be Rick. No offense, Rick. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Good to see you, Rick. <laughs> Other um, questions? Uh, I know it's 11 o'clock, so if you guys need to sneak oh, out. Oh, uh, Lynn, this is Dave Goodale. Yes. Uh, there were a couple of people um, online who I'm not sending weekly emails to. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I'm not sure who they were. One just said simply owner, but they're offline now, so I don't know who it was. The other one, I think it said Jackie's iPad, but Ted, did you think that was Jay Gingrich? No, that was the one iPhone. Oh, the one iPhone? Okay. Yeah. So, um, if people, uh, I, sent get chat. Message, I sent a chat to Jackie, but did not get a response. Yeah, so I don't know who that was. Is Barbara, is that your Barbara? <clears throat> no. Okay, because I sent a note to her also. Dave, your audio is magically fixed. What yes, what now it's working. Oh, I guess I had it off or something. I don't know. It sounded like you were in a goldfish bowl earlier. You know, like you're in the bottom of something. But it's really cleared up now. So something you did cleared it up. You put on a sweater. <laughs> yeah, you put on a sweater, yeah. I can't, can't help you. I now don't because, think now, I did anything. Now you're back in the toilet bowl. You're back in the goldfish bowl. <laughs> Oh, so maybe it's where he's sitting. Yeah, it might be something to do with From the computer. Yeah. Uh, technology. Gotta love it. It works. It's a good, uh, yep. I think a pretty successful uh, first run at Zoom for a Tuesday morning fellowship. Yes, this was very good. And the uh, networking at the beginning worked as well. That's good to know. The coffee was good too. Yeah, I guess. If, uh, Thank you. you. Thank you, Rick and Rick. Thanks, Rick. Yes. Appreciate the virtual coffee. <laughs> um, I'll stick Thank on it. Thanks, Lynn, Lynn, also. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Thanks, Thank you, Lynn. I can stick on if people have questions they didn't want to ask in front of everybody. <laughs> I won't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> Next week's speaker uh, is uh, Ed McFall, and he's talking virtually everything Westminster. Okay, what, well, I'll repeat what David said. Dave, your, your audio came through very choppy. What Dave said, next week is Ed McFall's. And he's going to talk about everything church. He'll give us updates on what's going on relative to COVID and other activities uh, that he's aware of. He's and I think decisions that have been made at sessions too. Right. He's he's agreed to step aside from the presbytery meeting that he'll also be zooming at the same time. He'll duck off of that zoom and join ours for an hour with us. Great. Thank you, Lynn. Yep. Yes, thanks. Thank you, Lynn. You're awesome. Thank you. It's you. nice to feel a little more comfortable Thank on you, these man. things. Feel free to uh, email me if you have any questions or things that come up as you Zoom more and more. And I hope to see you all next Tuesday again. Great to have all, right. all the ladies. Come